Today's scripture reading is from Luke 7, 36-50. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman this is. But she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 50, 500 denarii, and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which one of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she poured perfume on my feet. Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So is the reading. And pray with me. Thank you, God, for the teaching of Jesus. We thank you for your word that gives to us guidance in the midst of our lives. Pray now by your Holy Spirit you would speak to us through that word once again. That we might draw closer to you and to each other. I pray now, God, that likewise you would hide me behind the cross of your son Jesus. And in everything that is said and done, you would be seen and you would be the one heard. You would be glorified. For I ask it in Jesus' name. We've been looking for the last couple of weeks at the relationship that Jesus offers to each and every one of us. It's a relationship that is offered to anyone and everyone, not just to a select few. It's an invitation that we've seen time and again, we'll continue to see, to follow Him, to be true followers of His. We've seen that the acceptance of this relationship comes with a cost. It comes with a cost. As Jesus tells us, as his followers, that if we want to follow, we have to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. He makes no bones about it. We've also been looking at the fact that this relationship, that if we're not careful, can become one where we are simply fans instead of followers. Fans instead of followers. And this morning we're going to continue to, to push on as we look at what it means to be a follower of Jesus and more importantly what it means to choose, to choose a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus. Not just any relationship, but a deep, intimate relationship with Him that takes us to that depth of being true followers of His rather than just simply fans. In our scripture reading for this morning in Luke 7, we find two different people here in our scripture reading. They come at this relationship in a very real sense from different directions or positions in different ways. In our passage, we find Simon the Pharisee inviting Jesus to his home for a meal. Come eat with me, Jesus, he says. And Jesus goes, and we're told that as he arrives at Simon's house, Simon does none of the traditional acts of greeting that would have been in place in his day and in his time. 
Typically, the custom would have been when someone came to your home, you would have greeted them with a kiss, at least a kiss on their hands. You would have washed their feet. And if you didn't do it, you would have had a servant do it. You then would have had oil put on their heads or someplace on their bodies that would have said that they were a distinguished guest. You were welcoming them into your home. This was the custom. And Simon knew it well. But we're told that he did none of these things for Jesus. So here's Jesus eating at Simon's house who by all outward appearances was a devout follower of God. We're told that in the middle of the meal an uninvited guest comes. A woman who is known as a sinner. A woman, if you will, of ill repute. She walks into Simon's house and we're told that she is weeping. We're told that she falls at the feet of Jesus and her tears are dripping from her cheeks and falling onto Jesus' feet. Now we go back to remember, Simon did not do the customary washing of Jesus' feet, so they're dusty, they're dirty. And she sees that her tears are causing the dirt to run off of his feet, and so she undoes her hair. Now, she would have assumed that Jesus' feet would have been clean, but they're not. And so she takes her tears, we're told, in Luke, and begins to wash Jesus' feet with her tears and to wipe and dry them with her hair. She begins kissing Jesus' feet. And we're told that she pulls out a jar of very expensive perfume and anoints Jesus' feet as she pours that perfume all over them. I believe we can begin to see the difference between the two portrayed here. So Simon knows. Simon knows all about a relationship with God through his religious training. But he's missing. He's missing who Jesus is as he treats him with great disrespect. The woman, on the other hand, understands from the depth of her being who Jesus is. And she comes humbly before him. Now, there's a difference. There's a difference between knowing about intimacy and actually experiencing it. And when it comes to our understanding our relationship with God, there are some things we need to understand if we're ever going to become true followers as we choose this intimate relationship with Him.